You can support our podcast by going to tinyurl.com slash Radio Don and uh, put a little something in the piggy bank or check out any of our affiliates and take advantage of their services, including USA Today. I have been reading USA Today since it first came out several years ago, and it is it is America's newspaper. It gives you a, a pretty unbiased look at the news. I have the USA Today uh, app on my uh, on my phone, but if you are one of those people who like to, to feel the newspaper and you don't like to uh, go into the uh, local hotel and steal a copy, here's a great idea. If you go to our website, go to uh, shopping and support, go all the way down to affiliates and click on, you can see the little uh, USA Today, uh, I think it's a banner or, or square or whatever. It, it's the USA Today uh, icon there. You click through that and you can subscribe to USA Today for only 31 cents per day. Remember, the average cost of a, of a USA Today paper is about a couple of bucks. So when you're thinking 31 cents a day, that's a heck of a lot of savings. Go to our website, www.tinyurl.com slash Radio Dawn. Cl- click on Shopping and Support. Go all the way down to Affiliates. Click there. Find the USA Today banner. Click there and take advantage of savings only 31 cents per day. When you go through our link... Uh, it helps us out as well. Welcome to the podcast. Uh, we're not doing a theme this morning because I can't do it right now. Um, but if you notice, uh, there's no uh, traffic here either. We're doing it um, inside today. Very happy about that. And it's uh, a fastball. And in this fastball, we're going to be talking about our good friend, Bill O'Reilly. Or as uh, Mother Jones would probably call him, Bill O'Liar. Uh, according to Mother Jones, after NBC News suspended anchor Brian Williams for erroneously claiming that he was nearly shot down in a helicopter while covering the U.S. invasion of Iraq in 2003, uh, Fox host Bill O'Reilly went on a tear. On his TV show, the top-rated cable news anchor declared that the American press isn't half as responsible as the men who forged the nation. He bemoaned the uh, supposed culture of deception within the liberal media, if there is such a thing as a liberal media. And he proclaimed that the Williams controversy should prompt the questioning of other distortions by left-leaning outlets for years. O'Reilly has recounted dramatic stories about his own war reporting that don't withstand scrutiny, even claiming that he acted heroically in a war zone they apparently never set foot in. And again, I'm reading from the uh, Mother Jones article here. Uh, O'Reilly has repeatedly told his audience that he was a war correspondent during the Falkland War, Falklands War, and that he experienced combat during that 1982 conflict between the United Kingdom and Argentina. He has often invoked this experience to emphasize that he understands war as only someone who has witnessed it could. As he once put it, quote, I've been there. I there. That's really what separates me from most of these other bloviators. I bloviate, but I bloviate about stuff I've seen. They bloviate about stuff they haven't. But at least he admits that he's a bloviator. Uh, Fox News and O'Reilly did not respond to multiple requests for comment. And these are the instances where O'Reilly touted his wartime, his time as a war correspondent uh, during the Falklands conflict. In the 2001 book, The No Spin Zone, Confrontations with the Powerful and Famous in America, O'Reilly stated, You know that I'm not easily shocked. I've uh, reported on the ground... Uh, in active war zones from El Salvador to the Falklands. Conservative journalist Tucker Carlson, with or without a bow tie, in a 2003 book described how O'Reilly answered a question during a Washington panel discussion about media coverage of the Afghanistan war. Rather than simply answer the question, O'Reilly began by, uh, 
began by establishing uh, his own bona fides as a war correspondent. Uh, quoting O'Reilly um, here, uh, I've covered wars, okay? I've been there, the Falklands, Northern Ireland, the Middle East. I've been almost killed three times, okay? The 2004 column about U.S. soldiers fighting in Iraq, O'Reilly noted, having survived a combat situation in Argentina during the Falklands War, I know that life and death decisions are made in a flash. In 2008, he took a shot at Bill Moyers, saying that I missed Moyers in the war zone of the Falkland Islands conflict in Argentina, the Middle East, and Northern Ireland. I looked for Bill. I didn't see him. In 2003, while discussing the Boston Marathon bombing, uh, O'Reilly shared a, a heroic tale of his exploits in the Falkland War. This is a quote. I was in a situation one time in a war zone in Argentina. Maybe I should do... A, Oberman and just do it like, like he would do it uh, <laughs> if he if he still had the uh, ability to do so. Uh, hint, hint. I was in a situation one time in a war zone in Argentina, in the Falklands, where my photographer got run down and then hit his head and was bleeding from ear from the ear on the concrete. And the army was chasing us. I had to make a decision. I wa I dragged him off. I can't do it as well as Olbermann. Uh, I dragged him off, and but at the time I was looking around and trying to do my job. I had to figure I had to get this guy out of there because that was more important. And by reading that, I was like, "Gosh, you got you got to hand it to Bill O'Reilly." But then again, his own account of his time in Argentina in the book The No Spin Zone contains no references to O'Reilly experiencing or covering any combat during the Falklands War. In that book, in which part chronicles his troubled stint as a CBS news reporter, O'Reilly reports that he arrived in Buenos Aires soon before the Argentine junta uh, surrendered to the British, ending a 10-week war over control of two territories off the coast of Argentina. And we're quoting him from the book. Uh, there is nothing in this memoir indicating that, indicating that O'Reilly witnessed the fighting between the British and Argentine military forces, or that he got anywhere close to the Falkland Islands, which are 300 miles off Argentina's shore and about 12,000 miles south of Buenos Aires. Now, given the remote location of the war zone, which included the British territory of South Georgia and the South Sandwich Islands, more than 1,400 miles offshore, few reporters were able to witness and report on the combat that claimed the lives of 900 Argentine and British troops. Uh, the uh, government in London only allowed about 30 British journalists to accompany uh, military forces. As Caroline Wyatt, the BBC's defense correspondent, recently noted, it was a war in which a group of correspondents and crews sailing with the Royal Navy were almost entirely dependent on the military, not only for access to the conflict, but also uh, for the means of reporting it back to the UK. And Robert Fox, one of the embedded British reporters, recalled, we were, in all, a party of 32 to 34 accredited journalists, photographers, television crew members, all white, male, and British. There was no embedded reporter from Europe, the Commonwealth, or the United States, though they tried hard, to do that, let alone Latin America. American reporters were not on the ground in this distant uh, war zone. Quoting Susan Zerlinski, a longtime CBS reporter who helped manage the network's coverage of the war for Buenos Aires, nobody got the war zone, nobody got to the war zone during the Falklands War. You weren't allowed to be on by any Argentinas, Argentinans. No CBS person got there. And that's how Bob Schieffer, who was CBS News lead correspondent covering the Falklands War, re recalls it. Nobody from CBS got to the Falklands. Nobody, not even O'Reilly, got to the Falklands. I came close. We were trying to get somebody down there. It was impossible. He notes that NBC News reporter Robin Lloyd was the only American 
correspondent to reach the islands. I remember I got my butt scooped on that. He got out there, and we were all trying to get there. Boy also told Mother Jones that he managed to convince the Argentine military to let him visit Port Stanley, the capital of the Falkland Islands, but he only spent a day there. And this was weeks before the British forces arrived and the fighting began. Schieffer adds, quoting him, for us, you were a thousand miles from where the fighting was, so we had some great meals. In other words, Bill O'Reilly wasn't in the Falklands. He didn't cover the fighting. At least Brian Williams was in all this. And there are still people who say that maybe um, Brian Williams was uh, hit by enemy gunfire, that maybe all this was in part, part of that fog of memory that Williams talked about. But then I ran into this. And this was has not been mentioned at all in the last few days during uh, the Bill O'Reilly, uh, Brian Williams problem. I'll tell you what I feel about that in just a second. But according to Politico, uh, D- Dylan Byers, he covered this. And I wish I could give you the audio here. Um... As a matter of fact, let me see if I can do this. I, ho- I hope you can hear this because let me tell you what was happening here. Uh, I'm in an office. I have a laptop. I don't have a plug-in to give you audio. But let me uh, see if I can give you the audio of Jimmy Kim- of uh, Bill O'Reilly on Jimmy Kim- Kimmel Live, and he talked about the Brian Williams scandal to Jimmy Kimmel.
okay, we'll do that. And I hope you heard that. Like I said, we didn't, uh, we're, we're not set up uh, like I would like to to give you the, um, the full clip of that. But basically, Bill O'Reilly, uh, after raking him over the coals on his television show, came on the Kimmel program and basically defended him. And he made some pretty good points that, you know, the Internet is what it is. It, it, it does delight in destroying people. It, it does delight in seeing the, the mighty go down. And one of these days I'm going to, I'm going to really talk about this, and uh, I don't think a lot of people are going to like what I say. But here's the point. Uh, if When Riley, when O'Reilly says if it, it was just one time, he should keep his job. But if it was a series of times, then he should lose it. In the O'Reilly situation that Mother Jones reported, it was a series of lies. And not just a series of lies about, I was in this plane, but not the other plane, and you're embellishing a story to make it sound interesting on the Tonight Show or whatever. This was an out and out lie, according to Mother Jones. Bill O'Reilly said he saw combat, he saved somebody's life, when apparently, according to all the people who have, who have, who have talked to uh, the reporter at Mother Jones, it was impossible for Bill O'Reilly to have been in that war zone, it was impossible for him to have reported on that. So I'd like to find out, first of all, how he got in. If he did get in. If he didn't, then he lied. Now here's the bugaboo. This was when he was working at CBS. So even if we find out that he was lying in 19, uh, again, it was uh, in um, 1982. Even if he said, even, even if he proved, if it was proved that he lied then, even if he confessed to that, his job's safe. Why? Because that was when he was at CBS. He can claim that I've never lied to your Fox. So that's the bugaboo we find ourselves in. And the real bugaboo we find ourselves in is the fact that no one is telling the truth. And we don't even know what the truth is. Because we've already figured out the truth ourselves. And we will stick to the truth, no matter what the truth really is. One more thing. Uh, this, is, this is from Think Progress's Ian Milzer. This was a tweet that he sent out on the 10th of February at 5 o'clock p.m. You can find him at I. Mills Heiser. Mills Heiser, I'm sorry. I. Mills Heiser. M I L L H I S E R. His tweet pretty much sums everything up. Breaking. Brian Williams becomes the first person in human history to suffer professional consequences for lying about the Iraq war. And you want to know what the fun stuff is? Some of those same liars are aligning themselves with another person with the last name of Bush. You can find us at www tinyurl.com slash radio dine. You can also find us on Facebook 
at DLP Radio. We'll talk to you soon.